Hello and welcome to Hacking the Exile, the show that gives you all the extra material you need to really appreciate the Exile 6e webisodes. Today, once again, I'm very happy to introduce uh, the star of the show, Amelia Andersdotter. Welcome. Thank you. I'm, I'm very happy to have you here. You've been on the show quite a lot. Um, well, yes, as the main character, I have to take a prominent role in the, in the plot and also in, in driving the chain of events in the webisode series forward. And that gives you the bonus of appearing on this show quite a lot as well. Yeah, it's one of the better aspects of my work. We're very happy to have you here. At least I'm very happy to have you here. I hope the viewers are happy to have you here as well. And I hope you are happy to be here. Uh, I'm very happy to be here and I'm very honored to be given such a warm welcome. Well, unfortunately, this is uh, the last episode of the season. Uh, so people will not be able to see Hacking the Exile again until September. That's only four weeks, though, so I guess um, you could go out, read a good book, enjoy the sunshine, have an apple. Um, summer will be over in the jiffy and Hacking the Exile will be back. Yeah, so uh, I, I think they will manage until we're back. But you're not taking a break. Well, um, I'm going to be working a bit over the summer. Um, so we're doing a tour in Sweden where we're going around to different places in order to do makeup that helps people avoid facial recognition software. Um, what is that? You're dressed like KISS? Well, sort of, except the KISS makeup actually isn't very helpful if you want to avoid facial recognition software. So you need to, to do the makeup in, in kind of a cool way, but differently from KISS, but kind of along those lines, yes. Okay. And so, so we're hoping also to be uh, simultaneously able to talk to people about um, surveillance in our, in our public spaces and surveillance in areas where uh, we can't avoid being surveilled, uh, like in school or in parking houses, food, grocery stores, even, even public streets like shopping streets and cities are increasingly surveilled. And so how do we deal with that as citizens and how do we deal with automated storage and collection of that, that data which actually gives primarily security companies a lot of power over single individuals in, in society and they're not very well regulated to deal with that power. Uh, and what is facial recognition then? It's just not regular cameras anymore. Um, well, the camera is fairly regular, so the camera will work just as normal, but uh, what you do is you let a computer analyze the picture, and then the computer will understand kind of if there is something reminiscent of a face in the picture that... that it's the, like tagging faces on Facebook? Um, yeah, like that. Okay, yeah. but a little bit more advanced. Um, well, Facebook actually has a lot more advanced technologies than they're allowed to use in Europe. Um, so probably they would still use them on the pictures that you upload on Facebook, but they're not allowed to make it obvious to you, the user, that no. they're doing that. And we're avoiding this by having makeup that distorts the facial recognition pattern. Yeah. The lines and so on. And yeah. So apparently like this part, for instance, is very easily recognizable in a face. And so normally if you're doing um, it's like a project called CV Dazzle that did this makeup first, and so you will want to cover that part normally. But so also bangs will go back in fashion. Let's hope. We we will all hope that bangs go back in fashion. We might actually start a new trend in in makeup and uh, haircuts with with this project. But I think that uh, trend setting is one of the important aspects of being both both young and political. Okay, and, and this is for a week of the summer or something like that? Yeah, like f four or five days that will be out and then we'll simultaneously also be talking about the debates that they've been having in, in Germany and in the Netherlands because they're launching drones to be watching public transportation means and so forth. And so how, how do you relate to that? And we're, we're having help from one of the Czech pirates and we're having help from one of the German pirates. And so I'm actually very excited to be going and I think it'll be an awesome week. Okay, and... Um I hope as many people as possible get to meet you during the tour and that you have a great time in Sweden. Thank you. Uh, I but do you know what I saw? What? Uh, speaking of something completely different, that the young pirates in Sweden have been getting um, a grant to help them start up European collaboration for young people that want to improve internet and information policy. Yeah, I heard something about that. And so I'm very happy about that also because I'll be going to the last day of their summer camp. Mm -hmm. um, and I hope that there will be many people from all over Europe there and that we can talk how we can coordinate and collaborate um, running up to the elections, but also after the elections on, on um, actually having a sustainable impact on the way that we deal with information regulation frameworks in society. Well, the camp will have people from at least five youth wings of, of pirate, European pirate parties. So it, I think it will be an awesome event. 
you're kind of an organizer, aren't you? I'm the main responsible person, yes. Uh, I, so uh, I'm really looking forward to spending my, my summer doing that. Uh, it will be really cool. And it will bring a lot of pirates to Sweden. Now, we haven't had lots of international uh, meetings in Sweden, actually, for the pirates. We had in 2008 in Uppsala. Uh, mm -hmm. But since then, we haven't hosted any international meeting in Sweden. So I think it will be great not only for, for the guests, but also for the Swedish pirates. So uh, I'll only be coming in the last day of the camp and then I'll also be attending the startup meeting on the 9th. So what will you be doing between the 5th and the 8th? Well, basically it's a lot of community building. Uh, we need to get these people uh, not only to know that they are part of a European movement but feel that they're part of a European movement. We need to create the ties that will make these people stay connected even after the week is over. Um, and we need to give them a common purpose. So uh, I hope we will be able to do that. We have some external people who will, are good at community building who will help us. Uh, so uh, I, think, I think it will be awesome. And hopefully we will be able to film a lot of it and show on the XL6E this fall. Oh. So that might actually be the premiere episode that you have giving a little bit of a you know, spoiler about. Uh, but, but then you're back to Brussels and the work starts again, or? Um, well, I, I think that I will have something like a week where I don't really know what I do. Well, and you could have vacation. Um, uh, I could, but we see if I can fill it up with something more constructive, actually. So, um, but then I hope that I'll, I'll be going to Romania in the end of August again, because so there's, um, there's a lot of activities going on in the west of Romania this summer, and I was invited to take part in a hackathon and um, a beer event and uh, kind of lectures, and then they have an event for basically open open source deployment in, in the public sector and in different aspects of your society. And so I was hoping that I'd be able to go there for a couple of days in Arad. Um, Which is all the way over at the border to Hungary. Yeah, it's very far west in Romania. So essentially in the past, when I went in Romania, mostly it's been in Bucharest, um, which is kind of southeast and um, I never... And you speak Romanian? I speak a bit of Romanian. I speak a sufficient amount of Romanian to have a basic conversation. Um, but I can't do political orations in, in this language. Yes. Yet. It's my aim, of course, mm -hmm. and I try. But who's organizing these events in, in Romania that you're going to? Um, the one in Cluj Napoca is organized by the Pirate Party in Romania and a few people who are uh, very active around Cluj Napoca and kind of building a, com like a sense of community around the feeling that it's possible to change something. Because so in a, in a country which is in, like in, in Romania, often I get the feeling that people don't really have this idea that it's possible to change something. We're having it increasingly in Sweden as well, which is bad, and I hope that we'll change that. But um, it, Romania is just further gone, and so um, the people in Cluj that, that organize this event, I guess they want to change that feeling and say that actually we can we can do whatever we want. It's in a democracy. We, we run the society, so we should take responsibility for that. So you're basically going there to be the actual proof that if you really want something uh, and with the right circumstances, you can make a real difference. I, uh, I mean, you're, I, you're the embodiment of that idea. I, I hope that I can. I, I hope that I can help people feel that it's possible to change stuff because I think it's not as it's not as difficult as people believe it is. Um, it only but, takes uh, hard work and all your time. Yeah, so it takes a lot of hard work and also um, the, the, what one needs to remember is that the people who have the more power, uh, the more power you have, the less responsibility you want to take because it's actually very difficult to be responsible for stuff. Um, and so this is why when we're small, our parents tell us that we have to apologize if we take the last ice cream and we refuse because it's actually counterintuitive for a person to take responsibility for something. And that's why politicians often do stupid things that kind of meh. And so I think, uh, but um, that is not to say that you can't change stupid decisions for which people don't take responsibility. You just need to find the place where accountability should be had and also find a way of, of having, of framing the problem in such a way that people can easily, or politicians also, can easily make the right decisions. And, and create a consensus that responsibility should actually be there. Yeah. A lot of people say that this, I couldn't change this, it's not my fault. I mean, so. 
uh, especially when it comes to politicians, they will basically say that it was out of their hands. But this is bullshit in a way. Like it's like, in, especially when politicians say this or like government ministers, um, they can change it. It's all a question of what. If you're a minister, if you're a politician, if you're a publicly elected official, you have a lot of power. You can do almost whatever the hell you want. And saying to somebody then that it was, you weren't able to do anything at all, that, that, is, that is a lie. In, I mean, so the, the, people will accuse politicians of lying about kind of issues, single issues. It's really not relevant. What, what is very, very damaging to the democratic system and to society at large is when politicians say that they can't do anything or that it's not in their power to do something. That is never, ever true. Okay, so let's that be the message for today. You should hold your... Uh, politicians accountable for their actions. Uh, you should hold Amelia responsible for her actions. You ho should hold all the parliamentarians here in the European Parliament responsible. You should hold the parliamentarians and the government in your country responsible. And you should also be responsible yourself for and your you own actions. And you should vote for the Pirate Party. And, and of course you should vote for the Pirate Party. If you don't have a Pirate Party in your country, contact us and we can help you found, found one. And, and with that, uh, I'm, I'm thanking you for watching this season. We're, we'll be seeing each other again uh, in September. I hope you enjoy the shows. And thank you for coming. It's been a pleasure as always. Thank you for having me.